So the adoption is over. You're home with your child and everyone is settling in and getting comfy. And then you realize it's not over. <music> Yes, once you get home and you've just spent a year, year and a half, two years, three years, however long, trying to get this adoption done, you get home and there's a whole other list of things that have to be completed. So let's go through them together here. Number one, you need to get them on insurance. And if you're in the military, you need to get their DEERS card, their military ID card, so that they can get on base and they can get insurance. And um, that way, well, I know like here in Georgia, they've got to have doctor's appointments so that they can get enrolled in school. So if it's like that in other states and you need to get them enrolled in school, you've got to get their insurance. Also, just with getting their insurance, it is a good idea that you get them medically checked out. I know that they had to go through all these doctor's appointments and getting vaccines in Colombia, but they did those just as a measure to pass through immigration because the U.S. requires certain paperwork, vaccine, and medical appointments. But that doesn't mean that they checked out their teeth right. You need to see what's really going on with their teeth. You need to make sure that they don't need glasses, that their hearing is okay, that everything is actually going well. Um, with Juan, when we got home, we realized that he needed a chiropractor. He had some things off with his shoulders. He needed a chiropractor. So we needed to, to uh, get him in that right away. Okay, number two thing you need to do, um, most likely as soon as you get home, your adoption agency is gonna send you some kind of an email saying, hey, now that you're home, congratulations, but now you have post-adoption reports. And you might be like, oh, what? Now, most likely you sign some kind of agreement beforehand explaining the post-adoption reports. You might have even prepaid for them. But now you've got to actually start doing them. And depending on the country, um, some of them might only require four over the next two years. Columbia now requires six over the next three years, which with Paula, they only required two over four years. So we're kind of bummed that we have to do an extra year post-adoption reports. But every country might be different, but they need those reports for Hague reporting. Number three, you need to make sure and apply for their social security card. So unfortunately, they don't just send it to you in the mail anymore. Um, they did when we adopted Paula, which thank goodness because um, COVID had just started and no government buildings were open, nothing was happening. And it was just one of those little like tender mercies from heaven that it just showed up in the mail one day. So otherwise it would have been, oh my goodness, it probably would have been like at least a year before we would have been able to get her social security card. And having her social security card is important now, most schools will let you enroll your child without a social security card. You just let them know that the child was adopted and they'll probably want to see like some adoption paperwork and stuff. Um, but to be able to fi file taxes, to claim them on your taxes, you won't be able to do without your social security number. So um, it just makes life so much easier to have that social security number. Plus with that, you're then able to apply for a U.S. passport. So, um, so anyways, that is number three on our list, which we did that. We were able to go down and get Juan's social security card just a couple weeks ago and it already came in the mail. So we're good to go on that. Check. Number four. The fourth thing that um, needs to happen is unfortunately you just have to kind of patiently wait for this one. So you're waiting for USCIS to send you paperwork in the mail to go and get your child's um, certificate of citizenship. So if your child is younger than 14, it should just come in the mail, as far as I understand. If they're older than 14, then you wait for that paperwork, you go in when you have the appointment, 
and then they have to do like the little like oath thing they repeat this whole um thing <laughs> and it is in English so our poor daughter she did it and she just she's like I have no idea what I'm saying <laughs> so that's probably what it will be I tried to translate you know more or less what it was but then after that they say the oath the paperwork gets signed and the certificate will then I think they printed it out yeah they printed it out for her right there at the at the office so we're still waiting for that one. Number five, fifth thing that you need to look into doing is called a readoption or validation for foreign adoption. And you might be saying, what in the world, readoption? We just did an adoption. Why are we readopting? What is this? Okay. So you did the adoption in the foreign country. It's totally legal here. It totally done. However, when you do a readoption in the state you live in, then you are able to, and it's really important, you're able to get a birth certificate that is issued from the state that you live in, which is totally weird because obviously the child wasn't born in Georgia or whatever state you live in. Um, obviously, you know, our, our daughter has hers from North Carolina Obviously, she wasn't born in North Carolina, but it's just as weird as having her Colombian birth certificate with me and my husband listed as her natural born parents. Obviously, we're not. But they do that. They put us as the natural born parents so that it is everything is totally legally binding and there aren't questions about who her parents are later. There aren't questions about who our son's parents are later. Same thing, adopting them here in the United States by having that U.S. birth certificate, even though they have all the other adoption things, the U.S. Um, certificate of citizenship, they might have a U.S. passport, the uh, social security card, <sighs> especially with the change of administrations of presidents, sometimes laws change. And then all of a sudden, a an adoption that was completely legal suddenly there's questions or say you go someplace and they say well to prove your residency we need your u.s birth certificate but you don't have one so then you're trying to prove that you're legal with all of these other things okay it has happened in the past i have heard of several stories of children who were adopted when they were babies um, so it was years and years ago when they were adopted. Everything was legal. Everything was fine. They had everything, but they weren't readopted here in the United States. They didn't have a U.S. birth certificate. Well, because laws changed, all of a sudden, now they were missing something that they needed. And it came into question with the law, and they ended up getting deported. There have been people that have gone back, adults that have, had, that have been sent back to their countries, and they don't know the language, they don't know the culture because they were brought here when they were babies, but they don't have, according to the U.S., now they're not legal. So they got deported back. So that U.S. birth certificate is that final stamp that makes them totally safe from ever having problems with that kind of a thing in the future. So do the readoption which is going to be frustrating. I mean, it's hard for us here in Georgia because in many states, you can just fill out the paperwork yourself. You turn it into the court. It maybe costs $50, readoption done. Well, here in Georgia, that's illegal to do. So we have to hire a lawyer. The lawyer fills out all the paperwork, turns it into the judge, and it could be anywhere from probably two to $4,000 right? <laughs> Two to 4,000 additional dollars after we've just spent a fortune on the adoption to get the readoption done. But even as annoying as it is, that's, we're going to be doing that. Number six. Number six is grants, um, job reimbursements, and adoption tax credit. So there are, keep looking into grants even when you get home from adopting. 
there are some grants that will still give you money to cover adoption expenses even after you've gotten home, gotten home? even after you've returned home. <laughs> So keep looking into that. You might find some things to help you recuperate the, the major hit that your finances took from the adoption. Okay, some employers like the military, and I know some other employers, they will do a, a reimbursement or even a grant for adoption. So look into that. Um, and then the adoption tax credit. Yes, so we're not at tax time, but it's gonna be coming up here before we know it and you will be able to claim that adoption tax credit, get all your things together, make sure your agent, your tax agent, um, understands the adoption tax credit so that you can have that done properly. And we'll talk about it more as that gets closer doing the adoption tax credit. Number seven, the US passport. You wanna get your child a US passport even if you're saying, um, we're not gonna really be traveling out of the country. Again, it's just one of those things, it's one of those identification things that helps them prove their identification, their, their stance here in the United States. It's just another form of identification to help them while they're here, even if they're not gonna be traveling out of the States. So get them their US passport. Um, in order to do that, you do need their social security card. So of course you've got to get that first. Number eight. Now this one is dependent on the country. So Colombia. In Colombia, they had the kids go and get their Colombian um, identification card. They took the picture and got the identification card, but they didn't actually give it to us yet. The card was going to be sent over here to Atlanta and they told us it would be around like four to six months before the card came so we need to make sure and follow up with that now every country that you're adopting from is going to be completely different some countries don't give their children dual citizenship so in colombia you are, you have dual citizenship for the rest of your life unless you renounce colombian citizenship so you want to get their colombian identification card just in case you end up traveling back there. You never know. <laughs> you never know how it's gonna work out. It is actually so important that you get their identification card if they're coming from Colombia because that is how you will be able to get their cedula and their Colombian passport when they turn 18. And so if you don't have that identification card, getting those is gonna be uh, it, I don't know, you might have to just go back to Colombia to be able to get them. Um, and then to be able to travel, well, you can travel to Colombia without that cedula and the Colombian passport, but they're not going to really want to let you leave if you don't have those. They're going to want you to stay there. So anyways, that was something we ran into before, <laughs> which was horrible. All right, so then number nine Depending on the state that you're living in, some states require some different things from you once you get home with your child. In Florida and Georgia, they didn't really require anything, but I know in Colorado, and it could be the case for other states, they want you to report that you're home with your adoptive child. And that includes several different steps. Your adoption agency will let you know what it is that you need to send to be able to report. See, and then number 10, number 10 is just continuing education. Just because you're home doesn't mean that there isn't more to learn. And that means not only for you and your family, but for the child as well. So as part of continuing education, that might mean also not only reading and, and learning more in that way, or being part of different adoption groups or conferences, but it might include some actual therapy time. It is very helpful sometimes for families to have a family therapist to help them go through some of those adoption changes and also for your adoptive child. When we got home with Paula, we had a, um, a therapist, a child adoption therapist who would visit with her. Um, I think we just started once a week and then it went to twice a month and then once a month as she adjusted more. And so we're looking at doing that with Juan again. He seems to be adjusting pretty well 
but sometimes a child seems to be adjusting well and then they start having problems later, even like several years later. So um, having someone, especially that speaks the child's language that can understand in a way that maybe you can't really, can be very beneficial for them, especially in the beginning. Okay, so these were, I guess, my 10 tips, <laughs> not really tips, the list of 10 things that need to be done post-adoption. Um, if there's anything else that I miss that you guys can think of, just stick them down in the comments so that we don't miss something. So we don't miss something, so that others don't miss something. We can just kind of work together on that. And, um, you know, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that beautiful stuff. And thanks for joining me as we create our adoptive family. It's just um, a never-ending, ongoing process. So we'll talk to you later. All right, bye.